for the Rangers. This will be Campfire Tales. We're going to be telling some spooky stories. If you want to go ahead and invite him, Lou, that's all on you. I've, I've already got screen going here. I know that sucks. I don't know what you're talking about. I got a screen going too there, bud. Great. Well, I meant for Malice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hold on. I'll go. All right, we'll wait. We'll wait a minute here, and then we'll get we'll get started with with something small. I have a I have a short poem uh, that I'm gonna read. It'll be a spooky poem, and then we'll we'll let uh, Joka tell something because I believe Joka has something prepared. Um, is it Darth underscore Malice? Mm -mm. Darth Malice underscore 501. Okay. We'll get here. I'm going to edit out this first part, probably. Okay. Lou is a numpty. <laughs> Swarm. I'm started event here. Oh, crap. Get to the island. Okay, I'm coming. Excuse me, sir. I'm gonna have to ask you, please mute your mic while we're doing this, while we're doing this thing. I appreciate sure. it. Sure. Thank you sure, so I'll much. Just, I'll, I'll put my mic on top of it. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Alright. And then, yeah, I'll edit, I'll edit out what I need to do. That's perfect. Okay. So, to start out, I think we're just gonna, we're just gonna start with something short. Um, I have a longer tale that I want to tell at the end to kind of close things out, but I do have a, a poem, a horror poem that I want to tell first to, to kind of get things started here. Um, appreciate everybody being here. Thank you so much for listening. I, it means a lot to me. This has been something I've been excited for for a bit. So I'm going to tell a short poem here. It's a horror poem called Remaining Silent. Okay. It is called, uh, like I said, Remaining Silent. And I'm going to just start us off. Uh, red and blue flashes, yellow warning lines, sirens are blaring aloud. I'm dragged from my home in iron confines and through a contempt-filled crowd. My friends and family, they scream and cry. My eyes are welling with tears. How could you kill her? Please just tell us why. I try to swallow my fears. But a shove from behind quickens my pace from a large man dressed in blue. I'm led to a car and shoved on my face, the back seat now my new view. I stare out the window tinted so black in hopes my thoughts would gather, then gruesome recollection shot me back and caused my heart to shatter. My wife lay in viscous pool of red, sliced to ribbons by blade. The men who surrounded her body and bed grinned at the scene they had made. As I looked into their twisted faces filled with such satisfaction, they watched me stumble several paces, laughed at my dazed reaction. I ran to her side, collapsed at the bed. Her blood, my tears, streamed rapid. The hard blow to the back of my head, and swiftly my world blackened. The front, car, the front door of the car caused my stir. Now, he says, the man in blue, remember our words and remain silent, sir, or we'll kill your daughter, too. That's all for my first poem, guys. I appreciate you listening. And I think uh, we're gonna I, move. Go ahead. I feel like I feel like you're not all that close with any police officers, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is some twisted police officers, my friend. Do twisted police officers existed during the pre-war era? I guess Probably. Well, there's there. always been corruption, so my guess would be there's <laughs> always been corrupt cops. If there's been <laughs> money, there's been dirty. <laughs> so please, Lou, I, I, I'm sure that you have something to share. Okay. Please. This tale was told to me many, many years ago by the purveyors of mystic knowledge, the insane clown possum. Once there was a little boy who went to sleep. When he awoke, he was buried up to the neck in the dirt. He saw a man walking near and screamed for his help. Instead, the man walked over and started kicking him in the face. Over and over. And then he got the lawnmower and he just...
ran his head over, and that's basically the end of it. Because then it goes into a song. It's called Miss. You know, it's, it's we can't do the song copyright. But I figured the intro enough was safe. Damn. <laughs> brutal and quick. Yeah. Hell Sounds yeah, like dude. Like. Hey, horror, horror nonetheless. Short, I appreciate it. Slice. Say again, TJ. Short, sweet, to the slice. Yeah, <laughs> to the slicing, <laughs> slicing. Rip, did you have something to share before I share another poem here? Please. Uh, you can go. All right, bet. All right. Um, I have another one. It's called, uh, White Globe. Um, it's another horror poem. I am ripped away from sleep to float amongst the inky black. Warmth be damned, saith the night, to taut the clothes upon my back. My ears strain in search of sound, but hear no noise, devoid of it. From my peripheral sight, my eyes spot that which does not fit. Suspended, an orb of white, high above me, dancing in air. A single point that draws me, wondrous specter from who knows where. I gaze in awe for a time, watching the thing explore my space. Excuse me. To each corner of my room, the anomaly flies with haste. The sun begins peeking in, causing shadow to quickly thin. As the room is morning lit, reality soon settles in. I stare back up to the orb, my amazement reduced to dread. Ghostly globe floats, floats about, flying freely about my bed. A creature crawls across the ceiling overhead, blackened skin that blends with night, hanging loosely on bones of red. Most horrific is its face, decrepit visage of spite, to match its form. Ebony, but a single eye of pure white. And that's it. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cough claps. Cough claps. Cre creature with a with a with a plain white eye. If it wasn't clear, <laughs> oh. I was trying oh, yeah. to identify what the creature was. Yeah, it was just a creature crawling across the ceiling. He he observes it as an as an orb dancing around his room at first, but it turns out it's the eye of of some dreadful what's it. My last one is not a poem but a story. So if anybody has anything else to share, I appreciate it before I tell a slightly longer thing. It'll probably take about two to three minutes. Did you want to end with that one? No. Uh, yes, yes. If 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 possible, I would like to end with with my longer story here. Um, I got a I got an urban legend for where we from you know where I grew up at. Please, that, that sounds terrific. All right, now I, I know that a lot of you guys um, have urban legends from where you grew up and where you live, and I know Green Man is not just Green secular to where I live. Uh, the Green Man only is a guy that is green, obviously. Where I grew up, um, there is a an old railroad tunnel that they fill with salt um, for the road services, and it's called Green Man Tunnel. Um, the story changes, obviously, depending on what district and where you live, but back in, oh, I would say 1957, uh, right when they had first started putting electric running through the town that I live in, uh, electric to most houses, um, because there is a few, uh, houses that were off the normal grid, um... There was a, a gentleman who was called out to work on one of the power converters on a pole in the middle of the evening, middle of the night, rainy, it's miserable, uh, nobody really wants to be there, but this is the only guy they have to do it, so they call him out, he goes out, his name is Joe, Joe goes to the site, he's working on the, the, the he's working on the, the converter, the conjunction box on the top of the pole, um, it gets struck by lightning. Uh, he gets blown off the top of the pole, falls into the water. While he's in the water, because he's the electricity had caused a, a sort of static, algae had kind of been sucked towards his skin. And, you know, if you've ever seen Star Wars, you know what the Emperor's face looks like after he tries to kill Mace Windu with the electric so his face is all wrinkled and scarred and 
with the with the green algae that had kind of come to his face and clung to the rest of his body, uh, it made it to where he had turned green. And upon trying to go home, uh, his wife had freaked out and tried to beat him with a frying pan and tried to kill him. So he ended up killing her in self-defense. But because he was green and couldn't live with the fact that he had killed his wife, he went back to where it all started and now lives in that tunnel where the salt is. Um, I wish I was able to upload pictures because I've, I've been there many times. It's a green man's tunnel. And there is, honestly, um, an old fire circle inside the tunnel towards the back end. Uh, and there's a couple pots. Now, I don't know if this was ever done by, you know, kids that lived in the area. Or I don't, I honestly don't believe somebody lives there. But, you know, it, it added to the story and the mystery, you know, growing up. And obviously, if the dude was in this, you know, <clears throat> late 20s, early 30s, and the 50s, he's probably not with us anymore. But, you know, legends never die. And, and I'm pretty sure that um, one or two of you guys has a story, uh, something somewhat close to that, uh, about someone in your town. But, yeah, that is the uh, Urban Legend of Green Man. Interesting. No, I've, never, I've definitely never heard of Green Man. <laughs> never heard I wonder Green what Man, yeah. Green Man tastes like. Probably like apple. <laughs> then either apple or, or you know, this, like gl the glowing meat. I, I feel like the glowing meat monsters in this game probably taste like sour green apples. <laughs> uh, so TJ, kinda... did you did you have something to share? Uh, sure, I can share Please. something. Actually, you know what? TJ is wearing the face of Green Man. <laughs> no, you still can't kiss me. Stop asking. That's fine. Not what you said yesterday. You know, after <laughs> after you had those couple drinks. Exactly. I'm sober now. We yeah, all regret Yeah, TJ. Any, anything you have to share, man? Be it a uh, be it an urban yeah, legend or whatever. Called, nah, I'll share something called Heroes Humbled. Great. Uh, so our our heroes are an experienced group. Uh, they had just recently fought a intelligent adversary which they are not used to doing uh, as they pick themselves up and lick their wounds they continue onward to their uh, MacGuffin so to speak to save the world and a particularly talented member of the group goes on to scout ahead and as they continue forward uh their set of skills sets them far ahead of the group having to wait back alone uh, she encounters some oddities uh, but chalked it up to coincidence however as she continues forward uh, she is attacked and though she fights bravely and is attempting to regroup with her teammates who could easily dispatch of this all together, but by herself, uh, she just not does not have the strength. So during the scouting mission, uh, she begins to fall from the mountain that she was climbing, and she falls, and she falls. Her adversary chasing her the whole way. Uh, okay. When she finally re is within reach of her teammates, it is just slightly too late uh, as they go to help her catch her breath and defeat her adversary. Uh, there is nothing they can do for her as she lies dead in another's arms. And that is a shortened story of uh, the first player I killed in a D&D &D game, and it was my girlfriend. Oh, that's horrid, dude. <laughs> that's, that's horrible. <laughs> that's awesome. That's that gonna suck. Very horrible. I, I've, never awesome. to, very, I've never had to. I've never had to kill horrible. somebody. I my DM from now on. Right. <laughs> that's a brave move. I mean, like, especially as a DM, like, it's gotta be tough to to kill somebody. 
that like because that's a character like that's a character who has existed in this plane for however fucking long and they're just they're just fucking gone I did yeah I didn't want to go into too much detail because I didn't want to make it what it was obviously about from the start no, that was awesome I kind of look as soon as you started telling the story I'm like oh that sounds like D&D <laughs> didn't even mean to say it, didn't even mean to think it, but that's what popped into my head. <laughs> um, Rip, uh, Rip, did you have something to share? Uh, no. Okay. I, uh, I have something to share. Please, right, ball. Let's get ball in here. Okay. Here is a fallout tank of a pre... Here is a wasteland tank of a pre-war... A pre-war poem. Okay. Let's do it. In the dark, dark forest, there is a dark, dark settlement. And within the dark, dark settlement, there is a dark, dark house. In the dark, dark house, I stepped into a dark, dark room. And when I stepped into a dark, dark room, I've noticed there's a dark, dark staircase. And in the dark, dark staircase, I've entered the dark, dark corridor. In the dark, dark corridor, I notice there's a dark, dark door right in right in my right side. And in the dark, dark door that is in my right side, there's also another dark, dark room. And inside in another dark, dark room, there's a dark, dark box. I never got a chance to get into the get to the dark, dark box because. There's a dark, dark trap I've triggered, which acted like a bear trap. And and right now, right behind me, within the dark, dark, and right be and someone was right behind me. In the dark, dark bear trap I stepped on, it was Pikmin, and until I realized, I've entered into Pikmin's summer home. <laughs> Very nice. Pikmin, Pikmin is definitely one of those uh, Fallout 4 bloodied, intelligent, awesome artists. Yeah. So I'm sorry you became a raider's corpse on that one, my friend. <laughs> a definite victim. All right. I um, if if nobody does, anybody else have anything? Any other tales to share? I have the story of Mr. Rotten Treats. Oh, please, please, and then I, I will tell my, my final tale here, and we'll end this thing out. All right. Uh, well, you know how every Halloween, um, you know, someone always says, "What well, you know, let your parents check your candy for razor blades or check your candy for poisons. It's not because mom and dad want a piece of that candy. It's because mom and dad know the true story behind Mr. Rotten Treats. Mr. Rotten Treats was a genuinely good person, a good guy, that you would think. He had one aversion, though. He really hated children. He's always hated children. Because his wife could never bear any, he made sure that Halloween was special for every parent. Mr. Rotten Treats would stick razor blades, hypodermic needles that were used, and poison into candies and kill small children. He has a total of murdered children of upwards of two, three hundred, easy, and he's never been caught. So this Halloween, when you go out with your kids, make sure you don't meet Mr. Rotten Treats. Hey guys, I, I really need your help here. Uh, I'm, I'm on the I'm on the event to protect the robot. If you have a chance. Sorry, buddy. We're doing we're doing a thing right now. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's all we'll, right. We'll get to you here in a minute. All right. Uh, so then I have right. I have one I got last a minigun. I have one last story to kind of to kind of end things out here. I appreciate everybody sharing whatever they may have. Um, I have a story that I wrote. It, it was a few years ago. This is pretty personal to me. Um, it's called ADHD. And it starts with the definition of ADHD. ADHD, uh, uh, Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. Definition. A, a brain disorder marked by an ongoing pattern of intentional and or hyperactivity impulsivity, which interferes with functioning or development. 
This is going to be a uh, a statement by a gentleman who his sister was found dead in a in a bathtub, uh, drowned and electrocuted. So this is the statement of Isaac Hellerman. There are going to be two voices. There's going to be Isaac and Quinn. Um, this is a recording from Brook County Police Department, 10.53 p.m. on December 12th, 2005. Interrogation Room 2, Detective Alice Quinn, Head of Murder Investigation and Forensics. Um, Isaac, this is uh, all going to be recorded. We have your parents' consent. Do you understand? Yeah, this is probably for the best. Why is that, Isaac? I need to admit what I did. You want some water? Coffee? N no, no, I'm fine. Isaac, you wouldn't speak to uh, us earlier while your lawyer was present? Your parents hired for a good reason. I would. It would make your day in court a lot easier. I don't need anyone to lie for me. I'll tell you exactly what happened and exactly how it happened. So, you know why you're here then? November 13th, 2002. Can you tell me about that day? Before I do, I can I say something for, for the record? If you think it's important, Isaac, go ahead. Uh, when I was a kid, I was diagnosed with ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, and it made school uh, pretty tough. I wouldn't pay attention, and I'd act out a lot. It, was, it wasn't until my parents okayed medication. Uh, first it was Ritalin, then Adderall, then finally Concerta. What does this... What does this have to do with, uh, that night? Uh, well, when I was off those meds, I would, uh, I would lose hours of my day. I could barely remember what I was doing, uh, five minutes ago, let alone that morning. Then, why did you stop taking them, Isaac? I, it sounded like they helped. Uh, oh, they helped every, everyone else. My, my teachers, my doctors, my parents said that I was better behaved, more attentive, a problem solver. Everyone could see this change except me. I didn't see them change except everybody else could. I just went through my day like everybody else normal. Then that, that scared the hell out of me. I'd rather zone out on something unimportant than lose my identity to some pills. I understand, Isaac. Why, why don't you walk me through that day when you're ready? Um, my my parents left for dinner around 6.30, uh, leaving me to babysit my little sister. Can you state your sister's name for the record, please? I Elise Pellerman. Thank you. Please continue. Well, after my parents left for dinner, I watched cartoons with Elise until about 7. I think she was about 3 at the time, so I think we, I don't know, it was Spongebob or something. Anyway, I, I made dinner around 7.45, we sat down and ate, and then it was her bedtime. I, I drew her a bath and went into the living room to grab her and put her into the bathtub while, while the water ran. So, you left her in the bathtub while the water ran? Yeah. At any point, did Elise try to leave the tub? I'm not sure. I wasn't in the room. I put her TV on the floor of the bathroom so that she could watch her cartoons. Where did you go at this point, Isaac? I went to my room down the hall to play video games. What do you remember happening... After that, Isaac, remember, please, just be honest. Well, I think, like, 15 minutes or so went by. I, it was, it was raining outside, so I can remember the sound on the side of the house. And suddenly the power goes out. I thought that the weather might have, some, have something to do with it. Uh, is, is that when your parents came home? No, not for another 45 minutes or so. I got up and walked down the hall. The 
carpet outside of the bathroom was damp, and I could still hear the water running inside. So, without your meds, you had forgotten about Elise and the TV in the bathroom? That's about all I... Oh, no, 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 no. You, you've got it all wrong, ma'am. Uh, pardon? I, I didn't mean to insult you, Isaac. It's not that. <laughs> it was, uh, before I dropped my meds, I opened that door and smiled. My plan had worked perfect. Elise was floating face down in the tub just like I had thought she would. Uh, th those pills made me a problem solver. It was, it was the one thing I had liked about them. What, what problem were you solving, Isaac? Well, I, I didn't want to babysit that night. Problem solved. <laughs> That's it. Uh, let's let's talk about ADHD. <laughs> uh, being a sufferer of ADHD myself, I do find myself more often than not forgetting what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. So, um, it, it does happen. Like that's that's. The medication. I don't take medication anymore, so unfortunately, I'm not solving problems like I used to. I mean, like, um, like they used to. <laughs> so, so this uh, this story is is pretty true to life to me. Not the fact that I accidentally murdered somebody or intentionally murdered, murdered somebody. You used to have right. two sisters, right? So, <laughs> I um, I did actually start running the tub when I was when I was 15, and. I had went to play video games in the next room, and I forgot about the tub, and it actually it flooded my my dad's house. Like I forgot about the tub, and it completely overflowed, flooded I his living that. room, and uh, it it flooded his basement. And uh, dude, it has stuck with me ever since. ADHD is such a serious thing, and I, you know, it, it sounds like an excuse, but a hundred percent. I forgot I was running a fucking bath. I was so enamored in my games that it ruined, like, I mean, thousands of dollars of my dad's shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's. I got. Oh, 1998, I was arrested for arson and was completely unintentional. Um, at that time, I was on Adderall. I was. I've never told anybody this either, so this is. Please. Uh, it's part of my minor record. Uh, but I was on Adderall, and we had learned that a bunch of chemicals separate cannot catch fire, but when they're put together, they will. So I went to test that hypothesis because, well, now that my Adderall is not working, because the time limit, the, the six to eight hours that it worked, is now over, I'm at home bored as shit. So I took a bunch of chemicals out in the woods and was playing with them and it was all fun and shit at first until there was a big whoop. And like, <laughs> let's just say the hole I dug wasn't deep enough. And everything around it caught fire and uh, 120 by 125 square feet was. Jesus. Cinder. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you, man. Property damage is a can definitely happen, especially due to something like ADHD. Just forget luckily, about something or you fuck around. <laughs> right. Luckily, it was in the woods, so like I didn't exactly burn anything that was somebody had owned. It was owned by the you know township that we lived sure. in. Sure. But I mean, it's still like it wasn't intentional. It was just something that happened because. <laughs> The medication wasn't there, and I wasn't I wasn't focused on something else. And that's I would say I've I've always been a fan of video games, but after that I kind of really turned towards video games to keep myself out of trouble. That and boxing, I boxed for 13 years. Sure. So the, those two things are what really kept me from you know causing more issues in my neighborhood. <laughs> uh yeah. I, I definitely, uh, I definitely appreciate everybody sharing anything that was was important to them. I appreciate you guys listening to my stories, the two poems, and uh, the single story that I've written. I'm already starting to write something a little more in depth that's going to take a little longer for the next Campfire Tales that we host. So, thank you guys so much. Um, I wish there were more here, but I definitely appreciate the five of us that were able to make it, and anybody that shared something, Thanks. please. 
Six. Garth oh, look here. at that motherfucker! <laughs> There's malice. Garth is here. Um, I, thank you so much. This this is super important to me. I think that the creative side of our group is is um invaluable, and I hope that it encourages people to to write something in the future. So thank you guys so much. You guys have. Yeah, absolutely, and we'll do this again. Next week is going to be Power Armor Boxing. I hope people show up for that as well. So thank you guys, uh, and everybody that's watching, thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day.